I'm going to tell you about a card game, a very simple card game today, actually what I would think is almost the simplest possible card game. Uh, and we'll tell you about the um, mathematical strategy for playing it that I worked out. But first, I'd like to show you my connection with Martin Gardner. Um, my only connection. I wrote to Martin Gardner in 1988. Uh, this is when I was still in academia and told him I was interested in writing about mathematics for the public and I wanted to know how he got involved in doing it. And of course, he didn't know me from Adam, but he wrote a long and very, very helpful letter, four page letter you can see, uh, with all sorts of excellent advice on how to break into the writing profession, none of which I took. Um, but um, I just thought I'd show this as, as uh, you know, I, I was really impressed by, by the time he took to, to answer this person who he didn't know. Finally, 24 years later, I did write a book about mathematics for the public. It's called The Universe in Zero Words, published by Princeton University Press. And I believe that there's a copy out there. So uh, if you're interested, you can take a look at it. It's a history of 24 great equations. OK, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about a card game. So I call this game One Round War. Um, this is sort of collaborative work with a friend of mine named Howard Stern. And this was written about by Gary Antonick in his number play blog in the New York Times uh, earlier this year. So um, in this game, you're, you have a pack with two end cards. Here are six cards. And they're dealt face down to the two players. And so you don't know what your opponent's cards are. You don't know what your cards are. And, but it's, the dealer deals them in such a way that they're in, in descending order for both players. So you know that the card A is, is your opponent's highest card, B is your opponent's second card, C is your opponent's third card. Okay. So, and then we just play one card against another card uh, for one trick after another. So the opponent plays B, I'll play A against it. The opponent plays C, I'll play B, and the opponent plays A, and I'll play C against it. So you might want to start thinking about what is the strategy here. So as you can see, I ended up winning, up, winning two out of three tricks. The green ones are the tricks that we won, that I won, and I'm in the lower row. So I won two out of three. This applet you can play online at Gary's, uh, at Gary's blog. The applet was written by, um, oh, I've forgotten his name. Ah, it went on my head. Anyway, it's a wonderful applet. applet. Um, he tells you here what would happen if you had played the cards head to head. So if you'd played A against A, B against B, C against C, and it says we would have won two to one anyway. So one might wonder whether the strategy that we played did any good. <coughs> well, we'll see. Uh, let's, let's do another example. So uh, let's go on to the seven card game, seven cards for each player. Okay, now I'm not going to go do every round here, but uh, as you can see, the computer played D, I played B against it. The computer played its best card A, and I played my worst card against it. So I want you to notice that. Okay, the computer played E, I played C, and then the computer played its, um, its second best card B, and I played my second worst card F against it. Okay, so basically I'm, I'm sort of giving away two tricks in order to try to win the others. And, uh, in fact, I was very successful. So in this particular game, I won five out of, out of seven tricks. And if you read the fine print, you can see that if I had played them straight, A against A, B against B, C against C, then I would have only won two tricks. So my strategy actually enabled me to move from winning two tricks up to winning five. So it looks very good in this case. So the question is, what is the optimal strategy for this game, and how does it depend on the number of cards? Okay. Um, there are a couple ways to interpret the question. You could ask what's the optimal strategy to maximize the probability of winning or what's the strategy that maximizes the expected number of tricks I would win if I played many times. Okay, now let me get to the, t the title of the lecture. What does this have to do with Sun Bin? Well, um, I didn't know who Sun Bin was until Gary's column came out and then one of the readers actually posted a comment on it. So Sun Bin was a legendary Chinese military strategist who lived around the fourth century BC. And he was famous for um, having helped his patron, Tianji, win a match race uh, of horse races against the king of the state of Qi. 
And so here's my illustration of, of the race. So the king's horses are capital A, B, and C. Tianji's horses are small A, B, and C. So you can see what Tianji's problem is, namely that the king's horses are all faster than his corresponding horse. So if he races his best horse against the king's best horse, he's going to lose. And his second best against second best is going to lose too. So Sun Bin told him, let's throw one race. So let's race your worst horse against the king's best horse, and then race the other two sort of straight up, so our best against second best and so forth. And in fact, it turned out that Tianji won the match two to one. And of course, this made Sun Bin famous as this, as this great strategist. So, now, my question is, would this still be the best strategy uh, if we didn't know that that was the relative strength of the horses before we started? Now, I showed you the strength of all, or the speed of all six horses. What if we didn't know that? What if we only knew, as in the card game, the strength of our horses and the strength of the king's horses, but not how they compare to each other? Um, so, so that leads us to the card game. The card game is basically just a formalized version of this for those of us who don't have horses. So <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, one of Gary's readers solved the problem for maximizing the probability of winning. It turns out to be actually quite easy. Um, and um, you, can, you can read it here. Basically, you throw your, if you need to win a majority, just a bare majority of races, you just throw your, your top n plus one horses or cards against your opponent's bottom. And a uh, much more interesting problem is maximizing the expected number of tricks. And uh, this is the one that I, I spent about a year working on. And basically, uh, the short, you know, short version is that, yes, you, you should separate your tricks, your cards into two sets. One is the tricks you're going to throw. The other is the set of tricks you're going to play straight. You play the bottom, you, you play the, um, yeah, you, you want your bottom K cards to against your to opponent's top K cards. Um, but I only know this if n is greater than 10 million. Okay, so my proof doesn't work for, for small values of n. So there's a challenge for, so you gotta play with, uh, actually I'm sure that this is true for all n, but okay, but the proof only works for n greater than 10 million. Okay, so here's some, some values of k of n. And then the cool thing is that there is, I have an exact formula for k of n, uh, which is, there's a neat construction using Pascal's triangle that I can't tell you about here. Um, and this is a little bit about how I did it. If you'd like to read more, I have the 50-page version with proofs, and I also have a five-page version that just has the results. And you can come up to me afterwards if you'd like to read them. Thanks. Thanks.